Hello everyone and welcome to Long Island Legal. It is a pleasure for us to have you watching our program today as we initiate this wonderful Long Island Legal program here with all of you uh, watching our program. We have a wonderful uh, program today as we initiate this, init this program of Long Island Legal with our first guest today. We have the great honor of having uh, one of the founding, founding members of Long Island, of uh, Campolo, Middleton and Mac McCormick Law Firm. We have the pleasure of having Mr. Patrick McCormick. Welcome, Mr. McCormick. Welcome. Thanks for having me. Much appreciated. It is a pleasure to have you here. So we're going to speak about you and about the law firm and about a little bit of everything that you do in the legal aspect with this wonderful firm that we have so much for so many years that you have been uh, <laughs> assisting the Long Islanders uh, with all legal and litigation problems that, problems that they have. So tell us about you first. Well, uh, I, I've been uh, practicing law for 26 years. Uh, when I got out of law school, I started in the Bronx District Attorney's Office. Uh, so I had a, a great opportunity. And unfortunately, at that time, it was, uh, that was one of the high crime rates in New York City. Uh, one of the benefits as a young lawyer uh, was you got thrown into things right from, right from the get-go. So yeah. you know, very shortly after law school, I was trying cases and, and arguing appeals. Okay. Uh, I did that for about four years, uh, left, uh, came back to Long Island uh, where my, my future wife was and my family was. Okay. Uh, worked for a small law firm uh, for a couple of years, uh, then went to one of the uh, largest law firms on Long Island. Okay. Uh, I spent about uh, 14 years there, first as an associate and then 10 years as a partner. Okay. And then uh, after that, back in 2010, uh, my good friend Joe Campolo uh, asked me to become part of, uh, of his firm, uh, and in August of 2010, I joined uh, with Joe and our partner Scott uh, and formed uh, the current firm we have now, uh, Campolo, Middleton, and McCormick. Okay. Um, and we've been, uh, we've been together now since, uh, since 2010. Wonderful. So you, you are based in Hong Kong, but do you have any other office? But you work, or, or you, do you work throughout Long Island, New York City? We are, our offices. We're based in in Hong Kong, right by uh, right by MacArthur Airport on, okay. on Vets Highway. Uh, but we handle uh, both transactional matters, real estate matters, uh, litigation matters uh, throughout uh, not only throughout New York uh, but throughout the country. Uh, you know, part of what uh, we do, we represent, uh, you know, we represent businesses, both small and large businesses, and on litigation, and you know, litigation can take you, uh, can take you anywhere. I mean, just within the past, uh, within the past year, we've had, uh, we've had a trial out in Oregon uh, for one of our, uh, one of our clients, Party City. Okay. Uh, we also tried a case in, in the uh, Delaware Chancery Court uh, and had an appeal in the Delaware Supreme Court. Uh, so, uh, you know, the, our cases can take us anywhere, but our office is in Ronkonkoma. In Ronkonkoma, wonderful. Yeah. Okay. What will it be, do you think, a, a typical situation that you, that you have to handle in this type of cases that you just mentioned? Okay. Well, uh, you know, for, for litigators like myself, you know, basically, it's, it's a controlled fight. Um, sometimes it's between people, sometimes it's, uh, it's between businesses. Businesses. And uh, very broadly, uh, anytime there's a dispute, you can end up in litigation, and that's when someone uh, will come to me. The types of cases that we try to gravitate towards are the types of cases that will make a difference on Long Island, okay. whether it's for a company or, you know, or for an individual. Uh, you know, we've represented, uh, we continue to represent in a discrimination case in federal court, um, a drug and alcohol rehabilitation facility uh, out east on Long Island that's being discriminated against. Uh, we've represented you know, the, the uh, you know, small businesses uh, in the area in the MTA uh, tax lawsuit. We sued the state uh, to overturn the MTA tax, you know, a, a type of a matter that no one else was willing to take. Mm -hmm. But it's a type of, of matter that makes a difference to, to everybody, uh, both individuals and businesses on Long Island. And those are the types of, of matters we like okay. uh, because they make a difference. Uh, it's not just a run-of-the-mill um, dispute, uh, but we do handle... You know what, what I call run-of-the-mill disputes, but even those. I, I met with a, a client yesterday uh, who, who had a, a, you know, a, a small matter uh, that he was uh, he was owed some money, uh, but you know that small matter is very very important to him, and it keeps okay. it keeps him up at night. Uh, and it's the type of a matter that I, I, we can make a difference, you know, for for him and his family. Uh, and those are the types of cases that uh, we like. Okay, sure. Making the difference to Long Island, like you said, yes, the MTA tax was a was a big concern here on Long Island with uh, the business community. Not only the business community, but taxpayers. Not everybody. Not everybody. It, it, it affected individuals. It affected small businesses. It affected school districts, which meant 
taxes. It, it affected churches and not-for-profit organizations. It, it's something that had a, a, an impact uh, on, on everybody. And you know, through the lawsuit, we were able to not only bring the issue uh, to the front of the discussion between the politicians and, and, and the public, uh, but we were able to make uh, you know, a small difference and a, and a small contribution and hopefully make things better uh, through that. And sometimes, you know, these are some of the biggest challenge that uh, legal firms uh, will not be able to take, like you say, you know, you like those type of challenges. So that's a good representation that we have on Long Island. Right. Well, and, that's and what happens, unfortunately, lawyers uh, as a group generally are more conservative uh, and, and don't like to, as a group, uh, do things that are out of the norm. Um, and one of the things that we pride ourselves on, you know, we, we are willing to, in essence, put our money where our mouth is. We're willing to take on unpopular causes or, or maybe clients or, or issues that might be distasteful to a lot of people uh, because th those issues mean something to somebody, whether it's a, a business that's in the middle of a dispute um, or a business owner who has a dispute with, with a partner or an individual who has, you know, who has a problem. I do a lot of landlord-tenant work, uh, both for tenants and for landlords. Uh, and you know those we could call them small matters, but they matter very much to the person who's impacted. Okay, in regards to the landlord and tenant issues, there is a lot of those issues on Long Island. We know yes. that, and uh, all you have to do is go to the courthouse in in in, in Ronkonkoma, yep. and you see all of the issues there. So, what are what are some of the services that you offer provide directly to the landlords and to the tenants who <laughs> may have uh, uh, battling issues with you know either the tenant with, the tenant with the landlord or vice versa. And, and it's it's you know, and these issues you know these are quality of life issues. They come up every day and they're they're so important to both the landlords and the tenants because most of the time most of the landlords are they're small businesses themselves sometimes it's you know it's apartments in a house or a small a small building it's not a you know a lot of them aren't the you know the big conglomerates uh, and you know a lot of times the disputes are just over you know simple things uh, you know maybe the heat's not working as strongly as it should or uh, you know, maybe the tenant is having a problem uh, because they lost their job or, or they had an illness in the family and they need some, uh, you know, some, some help from the landlord in terms of being able to pay their rent a little bit late. And what we try to do, you know, it's very easy to both as a landlord and a tenant run into court um, and try to make a big issue out of things. And what we try to do is understand not only the issue from our client's perspective, mm -hmm. but try to understand it from the other side's perspective and try to bring some value to, to both sides, the dispute, to hopefully get uh, the parties to be able to resolve things without the need to go to court and try cases. Sometimes you can't and you have to, uh, but what we try to do is before we get there, get a full understanding of all the issues and what's really driving the issues. Are there, are there any um, contracts that exist with no paperwork at all uh, in, in the business industry? Because we know about the um, a residential area. There is a lot of mm. tenants who come. They don't, they don't sign a contract. Is this common or is it not very common within the it's, business industry? Believe it or not, it is, it, it is fairly common. Uh, and there's a lot of rules and we can get very technical about when you can have oral agreements and when you can't have them and you know, in certain areas you're allowed to, certain areas you're not. But even, even very sophisticated business owners, you know, a lot of people still operate on a handshake. And uh, though very often you get into disputes over exactly what was agreed to yeah. all with that handshake. Yes. And, and it happens with landlords and tenants as well. Uh, the old trust, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and, you know, unfortunately, you know, my father always did business on a handshake, never, never, did, never had written contracts. I don't have to sign the paper. Why? Yeah. I trust you. You trust right. me, right? And, <laughs> you know, most of the time, thankfully, when you have honorable people, those types of deals work out very well and you never need a lawyer. Uh, but sometimes they, they do go south and when they do, it becomes difficult because exactly. there is no paper. Exactly. And sometimes what happens is that, uh, you know, it's out of the control of either the landlord or the tenant, mm -hmm. why things come out of control. And, and that's where you need the paper. That's what you need. This is the agreement we have and this is how we have to go. Right. And that's also why you need to understand what's driving the issue because sometimes on either side, something happens that's out of somebody's control and if you understand it, sometimes very big issues can be solved very quickly uh, without rushing into court and without uh, running just up looking a lot for, of Just looking for makeable solutions. Right, and that's possible. When you do that, you know, one of the things that we pride ourselves on, you know, every lawyer in our firm who does litigation uh, is very willing to go to trial. You know, we take every case that we take, we assume we're going to go to trial, and that's the way we prepare for it. But 
The best way to avoid going to trial is to be prepared to go to trial. Uh, that forces you to understand all the issues. And very often, when you understand all the issues in the beginning, because you're expecting to go to trial, uh, you can resolve things uh, less expensively, much more efficiently, uh, and have you know, satisfied clients and, and even satisfied adversaries. What is the average time that a case will take to be solved, or not solved, but at least getting into a solution in litigation? The, yeah, the best way I can answer that is to give you, you, know, give you two very, very personal experiences that I'm, I'm dealing with right now on, on two matters. Okay. Uh, we've had cases, very, very complicated cases, uh, be resolved very quickly. When you, have, you, you get the, the people involved, sometimes you get them into a room where you, can, you have a conversation. Uh, when you have good lawyers and, and, and reasonable business people or reasonable individuals who want to try to make things work, Things can be resolved very quickly, you know, within months, uh, sometimes within a month. Uh, sometimes it goes the complete extreme. I tell the story all the time now. Uh, my youngest daughter is 12 years old. I have a case uh, that's pending in uh, Brooklyn Supreme Court. That case is older than her. Wow. Uh, it's been going on for 12 years. Uh, none of the parties are reasonable. Everybody is... is it's Pulling a, their side. It's a family dispute, and everybody is, is banging heads. They, you know, th these people... They wouldn't agree what day it is. Uh, and that case will go on for, you know, that case will hopefully be tried in the next year or two. And it's going to go to trial because they, they can't resolve it. Wow, so you never know, in other, in other, in other, in other words. Uh, un unfortunately, uh, you know, litigation, if you're, and I, I counsel my clients on this all the time, once you start it, sometimes it's very difficult to stop it. Uh, so you have to be well aware that even if it's simple, it can drag on for a while, and you have to be ready uh, to, to go through the process uh, and expect it to take some time. And not only to have the emotional distress that a case has, but also the financial uh, consequences that they have to have, exactly. paying the attorney's fees and all other fees that it comes with. Yeah, and I'm glad you mentioned the, the emotional stress that goes with it. Because uh, no matter who you are, whether it's an individual with a landlord-tenant matter or a, a very uh, complicated business dispute, every litigation takes some type of toll on the parties. Because it, it's, there's an unknown, you can't control it. You're, you're putting your fate in a judge or in a jury, and you, you, can't, you don't have control over it sometimes. That in and of itself makes things very stressful. And then you add the financial aspects that go with it as well. Uh, litigation can be, can be very stressful. And we try to avoid that. We try to, that's why we try to have conversations and, and have our clients understand the process up front uh, Correct. To, to help them get through that stressful process. Yeah, wonderful. And we are talking here at the Long Island Legal with Mr. Patrick McCormick. We are explaining to you about litigation. What is it? What are the, some of the consequences and steps that you have to take when it comes to litigation and what precautions you may have before you begin uh, having your litigation case, yeah. you know, and then you don't take, you don't take it by surprise and you just want to go to court, they want to go to court, and then at the end you, you see that it's more serious than, than what you think right. once it, you take somebody to court. It is not, uh, and I say this all the time, it is not like television. It's not like Law & Order or any of those shows. I, I wish it was. I, I wish I could have a client. Law & Order cases resolved in an hour, right? That's, I <laughs> wish I could have a client come into my office and the next day try the case and have a resolution. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't work like that. There's a lot of work, a lot of effort from both the lawyer's perspective and from the client's perspective. It takes time, uh, and it, it, it's, it's, it takes a toll sometimes. So now you know, litigation is not just like look and order. You know, it's more complex. What is the complexity of uh, litigation over other topics like immigration, uh, any other type of um, legal uh, practicing? Every, you know, litigation is very... Um, rule oriented there are every court has rules and they're all different every state local lo federal the the <laughs> municipalities every, it's it's every district every district court state district court um on long island they have their own little rules every in supreme court the su every supreme court suffolk county's rules are different than nassau than new york city Every judge in every one of those courts generally has their own rules. So not only do you have all the procedural rules, but then you get into the substantive law, whether it's contract law or immigration, as you mentioned, or the landlord-tenant realm. Every substantive area of the law has different rules, different, different, uh, you can have oral contracts in some instances, some instances you cannot. Uh, 
And it makes it complicated from the lawyer's perspective because not only do you have to understand each judge's rules and all the different rules, but all the laws that apply and then the underlying facts to the dispute, uh, making uh, the litigation part of it very, you know, very time consuming, very complicated sometimes. Correct. Okay. What are some of the, um, in regards to any other topics in, in litigation, what are, what are the most common cases? Um, it's hard to say what are most common because anytime you have a dispute, there's a potential litigation. Okay. Uh, you know, we're seeing uh, right now. We're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of claims by employee employees uh, who were not uh, paid um, fair wages. There's a lot of wage claims uh, that we're seeing now. Uh, we're seeing a lot of a lot of business disputes. Uh, you know, for for various reasons. Um, there's also been an awful lot of real estate um, disputes. Not the uh, the landlord tenant will always be there, but a lot of real estate disputes between buyers and sellers of property. Uh, you know, well, one client I just met with, you know, had a deal to to purchase property, and the the seller decided to sell to somebody else, even after there was a contract. Um, there's a lot of. It seems that people right now are, are uh, at least the cases that we're seeing are. are I don't want to say inviting disputes, but. Uh, are willing to uh, to get involved in litigation and, and the disputes area. Is, is, has that been common throughout the years of your experience, or uh, you know, I haven't thought about it. Uh, I, I, my and my answer is no. I don't think it is, and I don't know why. I, I see more varied disputes now um, between all types of people. You know, even you know whether it's the the, the big businesses that have the the, the <laughs> wherewithal to finance litigation. Down to you know the, the the small mom and pop store or, or you know the the, the employee, uh, we're seeing a lot more of uh, more people willing to to stand up for themselves and and, and to and to uh, go into the litigation arena and take the, you know the law in their hands and and really take action on whatever. Well, you should never take it into your own hands with the attorneys, of course. Right, with, with the attorneys, that's what we meant. Okay, you, yes. You don't wanna, you don't want because then you're gonna then, <laughs> then we're gonna be in criminal court and and we don't want to be there. Uh, but uh, meaning taking the loan to our house, meaning taking a case to court with the attorneys. So yeah, doing it, doing it the right way. Doing it the right way. And, you know, and on some levels, you know, I like to see that because you like to see people standing up for themselves. Correct. Uh, yeah, and and it, again, it's why we do what we do. You know, we're we're willing to help people stand up for themselves on some of the less, uh, you know, the, the less popular type uh, type of issues. So are, are there some cases that people say, oh, you know, I may not need an attorney, but then they go to court and the court tells them you need an attorney? It happens. Uh, it happens all the time. And uh, it's interesting because one of the biggest areas that happens is when you have a company, when you're a corporation, and a lot of people have corporations for small little matters. By law in New York, every corporation in court has to be represented by a lawyer. So, and I see it every day. You see, uh, sometimes it's a small landlord, but it's a corporation. Mm -hmm. you, the, you cannot... Uh, do it by yourself. Uh, the law requires, even in small claims court, requires you to have uh, an attorney. Uh, beyond those areas when it's a corporation, uh, you know, plenty of people try to do uh, the litigation on their own. Um, uh, you know, I certainly don't recommend it, uh, in part because of all the rules and regulations that we talked about earlier. And you know, once you get into court, uh, even if the judges are willing to uh, give you a little bit of latitude, the rules apply to you. Uh, and if you don't know the rules, then you don't know. You, you don't know. You can't play baseball if you don't know the rules. Okay. Is this is this law applied to uh, the defendant and the plaintiff, or only to the plaintiff? If the, uh, if it's a corporation, it applies to both sides. Okay. Uh, so meaning, if I if I have a corporation and I want to take someone to court, I need to have an attorney to bring this case to court. Not right. You cannot appear in court uh, without an attorney. Correct. And if you're the defendant, uh, the same thing. And and I've seen it happen. You know, daily. Defendants will show up in court on their own, and they'll say, I don't need a lawyer. It's a very simple dispute. I don't need Correct. a lawyer. Yeah. Even if you're standing there, if you don't have a lawyer, you're in default. Uh, it's as if you're not there at all. Uh, and judges will enforce that, uh, even to the, you know, to, the, to the detriment of, of the person. But the judges have no choice. That, that's, that's the law. Correct. They have to just follow the law. Okay. Well, we're speaking here at Long Island Legal. We're very happy to have Mr. Patrick McCormick. And we uh, briefly um, spoke about some of the time that a case can take. Mm -hmm. What is one of the successful um, cases that you probably had that it was probably finalized within a considerable amount of time that you believe it was, um, it was probably, I would say, successful because it didn't take that long? Well, yeah, it, it, 
Success sometimes is measured by duration, sometimes it's measured by results, sometimes it's measured by you know, getting the Everything. client what they want. You know, we just, uh, we just settled last, uh, last week a case in federal court. Uh, it was a $70 million RICO Ponzi scheme case uh, that was going on for about five or six years. Uh, okay. But it was lawyers from all over the country, uh, a lot of money involved, obviously, a lot of experts and a lot of different moving parts. And, and that was, you know, five, six years or, or, or thereabouts uh, in total. Um, you know, I told you about the case that's been going on for 12 years. Correct. You know, maybe I'll come back here in a couple of years and, and it'll still be going. <laughs> I hope it'll be successfully resolved. Uh, and, and, you know, we've had cases, you know, the, the typical case, uh, the typical business dispute um, usually has a lifespan of two to four years. Um, depending on uh, the parties and, and how they want to, you know, whether they want to resolve it, they're willing to resolve it. Uh, but a typical, typical Supreme Court litigation is two to four years in what I do. Okay, wonderful. So any, um, any uh, advice that you will give to our audience before they uh, begin their litigation yeah. case? And the best advice I can give, and I'll pick up on something that, uh, that you said, uh, if you're going to get involved with somebody, whether it's a landlord-tenant dispute, you know, I say don't be like my father and do it on a handshake. Uh, speak with a lawyer, speak with someone who can guide you into uh, getting into that relationship and getting some type of an agreement. Uh, because if you have it, then well, a lot of times when they come to me, clients will come to me and we have an agreement, sometimes they could be resolved, the dispute can be resolved very quickly because you've got the document that sets out everybody's rights. Uh, you know, I, I don't like it. You know, it, it makes me sad sometimes when you see clients who, well, you know, they'll tell you they have an agreement and this is what we agreed to, and you know, the other side will say, we didn't agree to that. That's not that's not what happened at all, and you know, then somebody's going to be hurt, and that makes uh, you know that makes me sad. Okay. Yeah. Wonderful. Yeah. So we we heard our counsel Patrick McCormick from Campolo Middleton and McCormick Law Firm in Concoma. So we are very happy that you joined this program. So Mr. McCormick, thank you very much for coming to this program. Thank you very we, much. We hope that our uh, viewers will enjoy this uh, program by taking the litigation advice. Thank you, and we'll be up uh, to the next time that we will see you. Thank you. Thank you.